Uh, this is rotational motion question number 21 check your understanding from the book pathfinder this question is based on a very simple phenomena which all of you might have um, uh, noticed at some point of time that if you want to suppose there is a rectangular block here and if you want to push the cylinder into it or if you want to pull out then it's always easier to simultaneously rotate and push right as compared to if you are not rotating, only pushing or pulling out. So this question is framed based on this only. And uh, there are two parts to this. This question is very important for JE Advance because in uh, previously last four or five years, if you see, there are many questions which are based on this normal day-to-day -day observation. So let us see what is the question and how do we solve it? So question is the same thing which, we, which I, was, I was explaining. So to insert or draw out, there is a cylindrical rod. This is tightly fitted in a circular hole. So you can see this diagram. And usual practice is to apply a necessary axial force and uh, simultaneously rotate the cylinder. And moreover, we do it in steps because by hands, we uh, cannot simultaneously rotate the, continuously rotate the rod. So in this, what they have um, done actually, because there are many students who have doubt in this slide, uh, actually what they are trying to say that since you can't uh, rotate from your hand continuously, you can't, you know, twist your, your hand uh, by to four pi and six pi. So you have to give one turn, then stop, then give another turn, and then you have to keep uh, going this way. So first question is, how does this work? Second question is, some duration delta T is given, and then uh, rod rotates with constant angular velocity omega, and uh, accelerate moves with constant velocity V. Under a action of constant axial force, force F, we have to find the torque applied on the cylinder, radius of the rod is R. So let us answer this question first. See what happens, this I have taken from the hint section, thought it was properly written, so it will be better for me to explain from this. Now, so let us see, friction at every point on the rod acts opposite to the velocity of that point relative to the point on the hole. So this here, hole is at rest, and when you are only pushing the rod into, then friction is acting this way. How much friction? Mu n, right? Now, normal is the same only. But then when you are rotating also, that time, at this point, there are two velocities. You can see, see this diagram. There is one axial velocity. And when it is rotating, let us say it is rotating this way, then there is r omega also. So it is kinetic friction. It has to act opposite to the net velocity. So net velocity vector will be something somewhere in between v and r omega. So now net friction, which is mu n, normal remains same only, mu n will be acting. It will not be completely opposing the push force which you are applying. So the component of force only will be acting in this direction. Another component will go this way. So that's the advantage. In this direction, friction has reduced significantly. Uh, previously, when you were not rotating, the entire friction was acting in that direction. So you have to, it is very hard to push it without rotating. I hope you understand this. Now, the second part, let us do the second one. The torque applied on the cylinder, we have to find out. And cylinder is moving with constant velocity V. It is rotating with constant angular velocity omega. So let us see just one simple diagram. And then we can uh, solve this part also. So the same diagram I have drawn here, you realize that this V is in axial direction. And then this R omega is in tangential direction. So V is actually perpendicular to R omega, right? Doesn't um, it's not very clear in this diagram, but you can very easily visualize. So I have drawn it here. This is V, this is R omega. Let us say this is the direction of, this is the direction of net velocity. Friction is going to act in this direction. I have written DF here because uh, I'm taking a very small part here. The friction is distributed over this, right? At every point. So here only DF, uh, net friction is acting this way. This DF is mu DN. DN is the normal acting here. And then now this friction has two components, df2 and df1. df2 is actually opposing its velocity at that local point, And df1 is opposing its tangential velocity, right? So here I have written that df2 is equal to df cos theta. You can see from here, this is df2, this is df. df cos theta is df2. If you just integrate, you get f2 equal to f cos theta and f1 equal to f sin theta likewise. Now. I have assumed this angle is theta and net friction forces mu one, right? So if I assume this angle is theta, so in this uh, triangle, you can very easily see that tan theta is equal to omega r by v, right? 
Now, since rod moves with constant velocity, then the applied force has to be F2. F2 is this component, which is in the axial direction. So this is F2. F2 is nothing but mu n cos theta because total F force is mu n. And this is cos theta, right? This angle is theta. Fine, understood. And then tan theta is equal to, if you divide these two, then tan theta is equal to after integrating, of course, tan theta is equal to F1 by F2. Right? That's also very clear because the theta angle is constant at every point. Okay. So we need to find out the torque. So total torque will be F1 into R, right? R is constant. So when you integrate the F1, it becomes F1. So that is step I'm not written. So F1 into R. Now, what was F1? Let us check. F1 was F sine theta. So mu n sine theta. Then this mu n value I have substituted from here. F was given, right? So mu n is F by cos theta. So that makes F 10 theta into R. 10 theta we have already found uh, in terms of given parameters, which is omega R and V. So that is how you get torque equal to F omega R square by V, right? So it's a very, very good question as far as JE advance is concerned, because it is based on a very simple day-to-day -day, uh, day -day experiment, or you can say the phenomena, right? So highly probable question. So if, if you like this video, please hit a like button and please subscribe to this channel also. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. All the best. I'll see you in next video.